Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers hydroboration oxidation of alkenes. This slide provides an overview of hydroboration oxidation. This is a two-step sequence that adds water across a CC double bond of an alkene. We'll start with cyclohexene as a representative example. In the first step, hydroboration proceeds with syn addition and anti-Markovnikov selectivity. The reagent borane, BH3, adds with syn addition across the CC double bond of the alkene. That leads to the following intermediate, which is called an alkyl borane, where boron has become attached to one of the carbons of the alkene and a hydrogen is attached to the other. In the second step, oxidation, the boron is replaced by an OH group, and this happens with retention of stereochemistry at the carbon that the boron is attached to. The oxidation occurs when hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, reacts in the presence of hydroxide with the alkyl borane intermediate. The result is an alcohol and an oxidized boron species. You can see the retention of configuration here in the orientation of the groups highlighted with the blue circles. Boron is on a dash bond in the intermediate alkyl borane species, and that stereochemistry is retained in the product alcohol. For a thorough discussion of the mechanism of the oxidation step, check out my lab video on the hydroboration oxidation of one octene experiment, which describes this mechanism in detail. On this slide, we're going to talk about the reagent BH3, borane. This is a top view of borane, BH3, and this is a side view showing borane from an edge perspective. The boron atom is sp2 hybridized, it lacks an octet, and it's a Lewis acid. Hydrogen is more electronegative than boron, so in BH3, the hydrogens have a partial negative charge while the boron has a partial positive. Borane contains three reactive hydrogens, therefore each BH3 can react with three molecules of alkene. For more information on the stoichiometry of hydroboration, check out my pre-lab lecture video on the hydroboration oxidation of one octene experiment, which describes this in detail. In this lecture video, we're just going to focus on using alkenes and BH3 in a one-to-one -one ratio because it's simpler. Borane is unstable on its own, and it comes in multiple different precursor forms. One of these forms is a molecule called diborane, which is B2H6, and has the structure shown here. Diborane is actually two molecules of BH3 associated together in a structure called a dimer. This structure can dissociate to give two molecules of BH3. Another common form that borane comes in is a molecule called borane THF, or BH3THF. THF stands for tetrahydrofuran, and it's a cyclic ether that is a five-membered ring. And that species can bond with boron in the borane, and that helps stabilize it. The oxygen has a partial minus charge, and the boron of the borane has a partial positive charge. Here, the dotted line represents a strong, non-covalent interaction between the boron and the tetrahydrofuran ether. It can also dissociate to give BH3 and tetrahydrofuran. This slide describes some of the selectivity in the hydroboration process. Hydroboration proceeds with syn addition and anti-Markovnikov selectivity. In the reaction, the boron atom of BH3 adds preferentially to the less substituted of the two alkene C double bond C carbons. For an example, I'm going to show this particular alkene that's differentially substituted and has one carbon on the left that's far less substituted than the one on the right. One option would be for borane to line up with the alkene in the orientation shown here, where the boron is going to make a bond with the less substituted of the two carbons of the alkene, and the hydrogen ends up making a bond with the more substituted carbon. Here, the blue dotted lines are going to show the positions where new bonds are going to form. The boron has a partial positive charge, and it tends to draw electrons out of the double bond towards it. That tends to make the carbon of the double bond shown here partially positive, and as a result, the electrons in the boron-hydrogen bond shift to form a bond to the carbon that's partially positive. These electron movements result in the formation of the following species, called an alkyl borane, where the boron is attached to the less substituted of the two carbons of the alkene, and the hydrogen is attached to the more substituted of the two. The other option for orientation of the borane is for it to associate the other way, where the boron makes a bond to the more substituted of the two carbons of the alkene and the hydrogen ends up bonded to the less substituted. Again, the borane is partially positive at boron and it tends to pull electron density out of the double bond towards it. That tends to make this carbon partially positive and as a result, the electrons in the hydrogen boron bond are attracted to it and they go to make a new bond to it. That forms the following alkyl borane species where the boron is now attached to the more substituted of the two carbons of the alkene. 
Between these two transition states, the upper transition state is much more stable. And the reason for this is twofold. Here, the carbon that's developing the partial positive charge is more substituted. It's a tertiary-like carbocation species. Whereas in the lower structure, the partial positive charge is developing on the less substituted of the two carbons, which is a lot less stable. That's one reason. The other reason the upper transition state is more stable is that there's less steric strain involved. In the lower transition state, the boron is closer to the more highly substituted end of the double bond, and that leads to some steric strain that's indicated here with the gray arcs and the red arcs, showing steric interactions between the alkene substituents and the borane species. These two factors, the position of the partial positive charge in the transition state and the steric factors, make the upper transition state more favorable, and that leads to the upper being the major product and the lower being the minor product. Each of these species then can be carried on to form an alcohol by treatment with hydrogen peroxide and hydroxide, and that replaces the boron with an OH group, resulting in an alcohol. This is the major product, which is an anti-Markovnikov product because the OH group added to the less substituted of the two carbons of the alkene. The lower species can be similarly oxidized with hydrogen peroxide and hydroxide to produce an alcohol that's more substituted. In this case, this is a tertiary alcohol, and it's the minor product, a Markovnikov type product. Stereoisomers can be produced in hydroboration oxidation reactions. Borane adds to both faces of an alkene, and stereoisomers will result when new stereogenic centers are formed in the process. Here's an example that illustrates this. 1-methylcyclohexene reacts with borane in the following orientation, where the boron associates with the less substituted of the two carbons, and the hydrogen associates with the more substituted. Here again, the blue dotted lines show the location of the new bonds that are going to form. Electrons move as indicated by the blue arrows, and the intermediates form where there's two possible approaches. The borane can approach from the top face, and that gives the following intermediate, alkyl borane, where the boron and the hydrogen added from the top face and have wedge bond orientation. And in the process, two new stereogenic centers formed, as are indicated here by the blue stars. The other option is that the borane could approach from the bottom face. In this case, the boron and the hydrogen add with dash bond orientation, and again, two new stereogenic centers form in the process. These two species are mirror images of each other, and they're enantiomers. Each one can be oxidized with hydrogen peroxide and hydroxide to produce an alcohol product, and in the upper species, we have a syn alcohol with its two stereogenic centers, where the OH group has a wedge bond orientation, the lower species can be similarly oxidized with hydrogen peroxide and hydroxide to give an alcohol where the OH group has a dash bond orientation and its stereogenic centers are shown here. These two are a pair of enantiomers and they're formed in equal amounts which is a racemic mixture. This slide compares hydration methods described in chapter 10. For this example, we're going to take a look at the following differentially substituted alkene. And first, we'll explore hydroboration oxidation. In the first step of a hydroboration oxidation, borane adds to the double bond of the alkene, where boron attaches to the less substituted of the two carbons, and hydrogen attaches to the more substituted. And that results in alkyl borane intermediates. And here, there's two stereoisomers that are possible because we make a new stereogenic center at this point and that point, so there are two possibilities, the R form and the S form. Each one of these species can be oxidized with hydrogen peroxide and hydroxide to give two alcohol products, which are anti-Markovnikov products because they have the OH on the less substituted carbon. The other hydration method is H3O+, adding water across a double bond using acid, which was discussed in a previous video in chapter 10. The reaction starts with protonation of the double bond, which gives a carbocation intermediate. The double bond is protonated such that the carbocation forms in the more stable tertiary position in this particular example. Then that carbocation is attacked by water, and there are two possible faces here that lead to two stereoisomeric alcohol products, where the alcohol is on the more substituted of the two carbons of the alkene, and that is a Markovnikov type product. The two reactions are complementary. Hydroboration oxidation gives the less substituted alcohol products, and hydration with aqueous acid gives Markovnikov products with the more substituted alcohol. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.